Alrighty tubers, we're going to do a really quick video on how to clean out <coughs> this style of carburetor. Now if your carburetor looks anything remotely close to this, you can probably follow along and learn how to clean yours out. Start by pulling this gasket out here if it's going to play nice and pull out easily. Because you don't want to get any carburetor cleaner on any rubber components in the carburetor. I'm going to pull the screw out of the bottom of the bowl because there is sometimes a rubber component in there as well. The reason why you don't want carburetor cleaner on any rubber components is it will swell up the rubber and destroy uh, the seals and the rubbers and all that. So start by just spraying that the bottom out so we can start softening that a little bit you've got your main jet here idle jet there I'm gonna pull these guys out looks like somebody's definitely been in here before me there's marks on the jets of somebody pulling it apart so somebody's definitely been here before there's your idle jet and they always they, they come in so many different shapes and sizes, but they all relatively do the same the same thing, same job. Here's your emulsifier tube. I'm take an eight millimeter. Nope, oh, it is smaller than eight. Will be. Let's try seven. Yeah, it's a seven mil. Seven millimeter wrench. I'm going to pull this jet out. This is like the quickest, easiest way to get one of these carbs cleaned up. <laughs> Look at the powder that's in that. That's gross. <clears throat> Got to have some 4 aught steel wool. 4 aught meaning four zeros. Do, do, do. Spray through this jet with a little carb cleaner. It is flowing, but if it's not, take a bristle brush, bend one of the bristles out of it, and run that through the jet. This jet's actually small enough to where it will not go through the jet. So you don't force it. If you force it, you can actually cause it to change the size of the jet. Oh no, it will go through. <coughs> Take some steel wool, put a little carb cleaner on that. And you insert it into the jets, pushing down with some good force and spinning it in your fingers. It will actually clean up the jets really nicely. It's rather toasty in here. Wish I had my fan on, but. YouTube, right? Can't turn on the fan because it makes too much noise. All right, spray that out again. Spray that the opposite way. Okay. <laughs> I am rushing this just a little bit, but it's going to be done correctly. Everything's going to be clean. I'm just doing it quickly. This is the plug that goes in the bottom of the bowl. That's clean. This is your emulsifier tube. It's what the main jet sits on. This has to be clean inside and outside. There's a whole bunch of holes. You want to make sure every single one of those holes are open and clear. You can take your bristle and poke it through each one of them. I can visually inspect these ones. They'll look pretty good not pretty good they all look perfectly fine inside though is definitely dirty so what we're gonna do take that steel wool again and run it through make 
much work it through. This always does a very good job of cleaning just four rot steel wool. If you use anything much more than like a two or three aught steel wool, it'll actually uh, scratch. But I use four rot. You see all those holes running like they should. So that's clean. But I usually use a four rot just because it's the finest. Doesn't cause any damage to anything. Doesn't change any jet sizes. Just does a really nice job of cleaning. Here's a before. I know a lot of people replace their jets. They buy carb kits and replace all the jets in the carburetor. It's not necessary. It really is not at all. Just take it, take your time and clean them out. Without even spraying it, you can see. Unless somehow you have enough miles on the, the jet that you've actually changed the size of the jet by the fuel going through it. I have never heard of that happening. I don't even think it is possible. Other parts of the carburetor can wear out because of miles, but I've never heard of a jet wearing out. Side's clean. Put that guy in there. And in there. That jet is clean. On to the carburetor. You've got your float. We can get this guy out. Sometimes these pins, there we go. Sometimes these pins are really, really hard to move. And sometimes they're directional. They have to go this way or this way to come out. There's your float. If your float is bad, set that down. You'll actually hear fuel in it. That float, there's no fuel or anything in it. Just gonna quickly spray it off. Now, car, uh, plastics and carburetors hold up to a carb clean just fine. There's no issue in it. Here is your seat. The needle's down there. But here's your seat. You always want to flow backward through these as long as there is no rubber down the bottom of the seat. Let's see where it's going to come out, right where my finger is. You always want to back flow because there's usually trash sitting on top of those needles. In fact, if you look at this needle, there is some trash on it. Now, you don't want to spray this needle off with any sort of car cleaner or anything like that. You can clean the metal part with some steel wool with a little bit of car cleaner on it. Clean up the varnish on it so it doesn't get stuck. Just like so, but the, the rubber part you do not want to hit with any sort of car cleaner or anything like that. There's also a springy bit on most of these needles. This springy bit needs to be able to move. If that doesn't move, if that part doesn't move, you can uh, soak that with a little bit of carb cleaner and work it back and forth until it moves, or you're gonna need to get a carb kit and replace that. Hmm. All right, let's spray this out. Get a little bit of steel wool in there. All right. I think that's it. All that I need to really clean out of this part for right now. directly in this passage to make sure it's clear. You can see it's spraying out the bottom and the top, or rather the front. 
and the top. There's no mixer screw in here, so there's nothing to take out. There is one here, however, and we are going to take that guy out, but we've got to count. We need to count how many turns. So we're gonna go in, screwing it inward, counting. So it's straight up and down right now. There's half a turn, one. Okay, so just one, like one full turn after it's gone straight. Take this guy all the way out. There's that needle right there. There's really nothing on it, but we're gonna go ahead and clean it anyways. Make sure the video's still recording. It is. It's nice and clean. Outside there, there's gonna be a rubber component to seal that in place. I don't want to get that rubber component with any carb cleaner. I'm looking down in there. That passage looks pretty clear. So we're going to call it there. That doesn't need to be cleaned any further. If you can clean, if you can pull that rubber component o-ring out of there, then you can spray down in there with um, some carb cleaner and get that passage clear. All right. I think that's really just about it on this carburetor. They're very, very simple. Yeah, Let's clean the, the bowl out here. Let's take some steel wool, scrub it out. Get all the varnish out that you're able to. I'm gonna take the steel wool and put it down in there and try to scrub out down there at the bottom. Just like so. Rinse it out. <laughs> bottom of that bowl is nice and clean now. Alrighty. Let's reassemble this carburetor. <laughs> that simple, that easy. I'm doing this all in one shot. I probably don't even have to edit this video at all. Um, what I like to do though, I like to re reassemble with a little bit of Marvel Mr. Oil on all the rubber surfaces. It's just something I've done for years. I'm not sure necessarily why I do it, but I've always had Good luck with it. I think it probably started back when I was rebuilding some carburetors that these components were not available for. So soaking them in marble actually softened some of the parts up and I was able to save them and reuse them. I think from then on that's when I started using Marvel Mystery Oil in my carburetors. ring and some marble. Put that screw back in the bottom. There we go. That's got marble all around it. We'll set that to the side. So we'll start reassembling. You know what? It's dirty down in here. I can see it. Just gonna quickly. The reason why I'm rushing so fast today is I'm a little crunched for time. I gotta get this to a coworker of mine. And today's the last day of work for the weekend or for the week. So I gotta get this done for him so I can go out and have some fun. millimeter. All these brass pieces do not need to be crazy tight or else they will break. When you're putting jets back in, push down on the jet 
push down on the jet and snug. <clears throat> That's all it needs. Get this guy. Just looking. That looks okay. Get the idle jet back in. Push down and snug. If you go too tight or don't push down, sometimes you can snap the ears off these jets. If you do, it's not going to affect the function of the jet. The jet should still work perfectly fine. But um, that being said, you won't be able to pull it apart as easy next time you go to take it, take it down, take it apart. So a little bit of marble on that guy. This was one full turnout. It was like that. And one full turn. It's like one and a quarter turnout is where it was. So that's done. Now on to the bowl, or the float. Put a little marble on the needle. first. Just like that. Where is there it is. Right in front of your face, come on. No, oh, I have that upside down. There we go. So that was when you were a little rushed for time. There we go. Now, checking the adjustment. Yeah, about dead on. You want this adjustment when it hits that little spring on that needle. You want this float to be almost perfectly level with the carburetor. If the carburetor is one that's at a bit of an angle too, you want to take that into consideration. But you want it, this float nearly level or parallel with the carburetor. Like I said, except for those that the bowls are not flat. This is a flat bowl. There's some styles that the bowl's actually at an angle and the screws are all around here. Those are set differently. Go ahead and tighten these guys back down. You guys are still recording. Good. My camera, or my phone rather, likes to overheat while I'm recording. And it is not a cool day today. Tighten that guy down. This guy. And last one, and we're good to go. Now on the slide, there's a slide that sits in this. All you do is you take this off and it slides out to take the carburetor off. You know, obviously a couple more bolts and stuff. On the slide itself, there's a needle and you want that needle to match up with that little orifice right there you can see. You want it to match up and go into that little orifice right there. And that needle itself, you gotta make sure that's clean. Take some steel wool, carb cleaner, and clean that needle off because if there's any varnish on that needle, it will make it run incorrectly. So, that's how you clean a carb out. If you've got a carb that's dirty enough like this, like mechanic in a bottle, uh, carb cleaner in the fuel, um, like injector cleaner, not this stuff, don't put that in, the, don't put that in your fuel. <laughs> But uh, anything like that won't clean it out. It's not going to do anything for you. You've got to pull it apart and clean it out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this is a really quick one for you. But we're all cleaned out. We're good to go. I hope you have a good one. See you, tubers. Bye.